Hello, in this video I'm going to be showing how to do TDC early. Uh, so I'm just going to show the trick real quick and then I'll break it down. Alright, so that, that was a really fast way of doing it. I didn't even have to beak bust. But that's generally how it, it would look. Normally you, you would beak bust. Uh, so, first things first is the clip, the clip itself. So, to do this clip, you want to keep a few things in mind. Uh, first is the camera. You want the camera to be something like this, where it's pushing into the wall. Let me kill this guy first. Where it's pushing into the wall, like this, so it sort of zooms in on Banjo, and faces more towards the water and the rest of the room. It just makes the game laggy, and... Banjo speeds up with lag, so it makes it easier to clip into the cannon. I'll show how to get this camera in just a second. The other thing is, you want to uh, make sure to flick the joystick, tap A at the same time to clip. You don't want to hold the joystick and, and mash A. It doesn't give you good results. You want to flick the joystick and tap A at the same time. Uh, that's generally the more consistent way of doing it. The other thing is that you just really want to make sure you're in the middle of the cannon. Uh, because A makes it easier to clip, and B, uh, if you're if you do get a clip but you're like on too far on either side, then you can end up getting stuck on the side of the cannon, and it's just a pain to get out of. The way to get out of it is to try and just roll to the opposite side of the cannon, and then jump at, uh, when you're like in the middle. It's just it's still not perfect, but it's the best way that I know of getting out of the cannon. So to get the camera. What you want to do is jump a tiny bit up of right, zoom out then zoom in and mash C left. And stop mashing C left when the camera stops changing the first time. If you mash C left for too long, the camera, the camera will continue to change like that. And you don't want that. You just want the camera to be like this. Just like that. What's happening here is that when I'm zooming in and mashing C left, the camera is getting stuck on this wall before I can fully zoom in. And that's what you want. So if you tap C left for too long, after the camera fully sets in, then it'll go too far. And you don't want that. So that's just something to make sure of. It's kind of something that you have to do in fast, you have to do in fast motion. Turn, stop mashing right there. Or alternatively, you can just do this and zoomed out, mash C left. And then zoom in once you're all the way against the against the wall. This it gives you the same results. It's just a tiny bit slower. So this this is generally the angle that you want. This is generally the angle that you'll get if you did it right, which isn't actually that hard to just get in general. If you just uh, stay in talent trot and sort of just run into the wall, it's not that bad to get. You just want something something like that. It's not, it doesn't have to be too precise, just something like this. So after you're, you get this angle and you're facing like straight forward, you want to just slightly tap straight right on the joystick, very slightly, so Kazooie changes 90 degrees. That'll give you a good, a good angle. That'll make uh, Kazooie change a good amount. And that's, that gives you the perfect angle to get the clip. So once you do that, once you get the camera, how you want it, you just do the clip, like I said, where you uh, tap A and flick the joystick at the same time. That time I wasn't in the middle. This is too, too much. Right. Just like that. So after you get the actual clip itself, 99% uh, of the time, you're going to land on the bottom of the cannon. So what you want to do is keep holding Z. Then you want to do a neutral jump. Just to get on top of the cannon. Then press B to peck out of town trot. Jump, peck. And then you can change the camera however you want. If the camera is stuck on the outside, uh, then what I can suggest is try moving a tiny bit more towards the back of the cannon. With a tiny bit of blind navigation. And then your camera should get more free. You should be able to get the camera out of bounds. Uh, 
if the camera is like under you, like under the cannon facing up, what I would recommend is doing a short, a very tiny jump and beak busting while holding R. And that should flip it back to normal. And yeah, that's just about it for the clip. The next part is the navi- is uh, not the navigation, is getting in the water. But getting in the water is the hardest part of this trick. So, there's not really a good concrete setup to get into the water. I used to have a queue where I used Banjo's belt. So, um, right when the, his belt goes under the surface is when you flutter. But, mo for the most part, people do it by feel. Let me try that again. Just using the visual cue. Something like that. Obviously, it's mostly by feel, so... It actually just requires practice. So... Getting in the water itself. There's a few different ways you can get into the water, and it matters which way you do get into the water, because you'll have to do different navigation depending. So, there's the first way is just... That's actually the rare way of getting into the water. So, I'll explain it now, even though I didn't I didn't mean to do it like that. When Kazooie flutters, she goes up and down, and up and down, and then just continues down. The way that I just entered the water there was on a second time when she went up. She goes up and down sort of on cycles. I went into the water on the second cycle of going up, without needing to beak bust. So that's that's generally generally the rarest way you'll enter the water, and it matters for a reason that I'll just explain in a bit. But the other ways of entering the water uh, are more common, where that way, where you flutter underneath the water, which is which just means that you press A a tiny bit too late. And let's see if I can actually get it. There, that first way, where you just enter the water right away. Those are the, generally the three main ways you'll get uh, to get into the water. So, getting into the water right away is pretty straightforward, but when you flutter too late and you're fluttering under the water and you need a beak bust to save it, then something you want to know about the timing of the beak bust is, it has something to do with what I mentioned before about the up and down cycles. You don't want to beak bust on an up cycle. That'll just make you clip back and bounce. You want to wait till after the second cycle is over, the second up cycle is over. Wait for him to descend a bit, and then beak bust. Because Banjo goes up quite a bit to catch yourself in the water. That can happen too. But yeah. You just want to wait a tiny bit after the final up cycle to beak bust if you flutter a bit too late. Something like that, but just a bit earlier. I waited a bit too long there. It's just precise, so... It takes practice and... Yeah. I need to get a better camera. There we go. So yeah. Generally... Uh, generally the way that you'll be getting in the most is... Uh, just getting in right away, instantly. That's ideally how you'd be getting in the most. So now the navigation. For the navigation, you want to keep a few things in mind. The water underground ends where the water ends, like, right here. It also ends, like, beyond the walls, so just be aware of that. You can't swim where there's no water. You can go down for a long, long time, just, like, over here, but you can't swim down here. So, ideally, you'd want to approach the chest from a side that's close to the loading zone. So right here, you're really far away from the loading zone, so it would be hard. Right here, you're really close, so it's easier. Optimally, uh, top runners would just go straight forward for the best line, and then flutter right here, or right around here, which is pretty far away, but it doesn't matter too much as long as you can uh, perfectly time your flutter. But I'm not going to be showing that way. Just because, just, just for simplicity's sake, or just to make it easier. That's one thing to be aware of, where you want to surface. Uh, the other thing is when you want to surface. I wasn't under the middle there. Alright, so... Right here. 
So Kazooie's doing her strokes. You want to surface right about there. Right about there is the best time to like exit the water. Because you have some more momentum and it's sort of like a good cue for when to start fluttering. Uh, if you do what I mentioned about how top runners just go straight forward into the loading zone, then you'll end up surfacing right there, right before you do the stroke. And that just makes it really, really awkward to just get the flutter. So, by taking a wide turn around this part and towards here, you're doing two things to make it easier. A, you're getting closer to the chest when you surface, and B, you're setting yourself up so that you surface at the end of the fast stroke, which is good. So, the inputs that I like to do when I get in the water is basically just one stroke with just straight, just, just straight forward with a neutral stick, then one sort of down right, uh, and then sort of switch towards down while you're doing the second stroke, down right, and then the third stroke is more down left, and then after the third stroke, you can either tap A uh, to aim yourself at the chest before the fourth stroke, or you can just yell the fourth stroke and aim while you're doing it. So, oops, that's just me doing it too early. So it should look something like this. Something like that, except I fluttered a tiny bit too late, so I wasn't high enough. But yeah, that's how the navigation would look like. So, the thing I want to mention about that's really important to note. So, I mentioned how you can get into the water in different ways. Three ways, to be exact. One is where you enter directly here. The other is where you beak bust, like around here-ish. And the final one is where you uh, enter the water on the second up cycle, around here as well. So, you have to take note of which way you enter the water. Because you'll have to do the navigation slightly different depending on which way you enter. Because if you enter early, right here, then you'll start your dive here. So you'll do the first stroke, second stroke, third stroke, then the fourth stroke will be lined up pretty well. However, if you end up doing uh, diving around here because you tapped A a bit too late, then the fourth stroke uh, will probably not happen. If you end up diving here, then you'll probably end up surfacing right after the third stroke. So if you end up diving over here, then what you want to do is go slightly more to the right, take a wider turn. Because then you can delay your strokes more so that you can end on the fourth stroke as normal. If that makes sense. This mostly matters for the rare occurrence that you get into the water on the second up cycle without beak busting. Because if you beak bust into the water, then you actually start your dive lower than you usually do. Which somewhat compensates uh, for being too far, but it's just still something that's good to know. So yeah, if you end up doing your first uh, dive here, then you want to go a bit more to the right. Uh, and finally, for the beak bust, you want to actually beak bust on the second up cycle that I mentioned so much to avoid. <laughs> just because you want to be as high as possible when you beak bust. It's a bit different. You want to make sure it's the second up cycle and not the first. Because when you're walking off uh, and fluttering, it gives you sort of a different flutter cycle than if you were to just uh, jump and flutter. If you jump and flutter, it goes up and down and up and down. But if you walk off and flutter, it goes neutral, then up, and then down. So you want to beak bust when it goes up. So... I'll show what it looks like when you tap A to aim at the chest. Forward, right, tap A around here. So now right here, look at the sand. You always want to be very aware of where the sand is. The sand will tell you exactly when you need to start mashing A. 
Just basically right when you pass it, if you can fathom that. You want to mash A, then hold it right- hold A right as soon as you know you're fluttering. And then beak bust accordingly. I might fail here because I pause, which messes up my flow, but... Like that. Yeah, that's basically about it. Uh, there's a lot to learn about this trick. I may not even have uh, explained everything, but I did. I do think I explained the majority of what to look for. So yeah, I'll do it one final time, and then I'll end the video. Fast motion should look like this. Oops, I wasn't in the middle of the cannon, but fine. Just like that. Alright, so I'll see you later. I hope this helps.